Oh man, everyone, it is another Monday evening, but it is an important one because it is a night for nominations and celebrations. That's right, tonight we are talking about the 2022 Utini's nominations. We're going to go through all the categories and tell you who made the final cut for you, the audience, to vote for. Uh, but before we do that, we have a few announcements about a certain Jedi named Cal Kestis. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. We're very excited to talk about tonight's show. It's been a long weekend for a lot of us, but it's all worth it for a good old Monday night. So, Wes, in the spirit of the holidays, pu 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 punch it! Welcome to the 2022 nominations episode of The Living Force. I'm one of your hosts, Eric Eilerson, and joining me tonight to celebrate all the great Star Wars content we got in the last year is the full cast of characters, including all the boxes in my apartment, but also Dr. Corey Helton! What's up? Oh, I look short in this angle. I'm going to fix that. Hello. The angle? Going? Yeah, the angle. Shut up. <laughs> I put it up high. There it is. It's so high now. Looks good. It's high now. Are you on your tiptoes? Yeah, I am. I'm it's high my, now. It's high now. Standing desk. Yep, here I am standing once again. Uh, I'm not sure where I was going with that. Hello, everybody. Keep welcome going. to the impeccable. show tonight. Good. It's impeccable. Yep. Uh, welcome to the show. We're going to talk about some books that we liked, I guess, and uh, you know some authors that we kind of liked, I guess, and uh, you know other things of you know that that nature. So welcome. Man, I'm so glad that Corey started rehearsing his intros. It's really made for the quality of the show to go up. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can match that, Mr. Dr. Charles Hankel. Mr. In the holiday spirit, Dr. Charles Hankel. That's right. Say. That's right. I am in the holiday spirit. I'm rocking some like off off green, off red, kind yeah. of. Um, I just want to say that I think Corey's intro probably should be nominated for a Utini, and I'm going to nominate it right now. And <laughs> Wow. The Utini is really, I mean, I think they're growing. They're growing every year. I'm excited for this year. Uh, you know, the Oscars, the Emmys, these things are starting to pale in comparison. So very excited. You're absolutely right. And I think I, I, I'm just I'm just waiting for all of us to get to the point where we start nominating our own show on our own show to really just make it as <laughs> self-congratulatory as possible. Um, but as Tim has already said in the chat, <clears throat> that would be a fruitless endeavor because every Utini in the world should go to the one and only Wes Jenkins. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, I hope you made it for the early live uh, segment and heard this Christmas banger that I found before we even started. Um, so good. It was the, so good. the first brand new song on se- oh, no. first brand new song of a band that I know. Uh, no big deal. Uh, they just what? they asked they asked me to uh, play this so I could help get their get their uh, tunes out, get their name out. And um, is it called the Wes Jenkins Experience? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a little too Christmassy. Can you drop some bass in there? And they said, "Yeah, no." It's like just wait, dude. In the in the one minute and fifteen second Hold mark. My eggnog. <laughs> so Hold my it, eggnog. we're in the Christmas wow. holidays, and within the Christmas holidays is the Utini season. Utini season. Yeah. yeah, we'll say that. Utini's. <laughs> the Utini season. So, yes, it's like a language. Utini's is what we speak here. Is Utini's. We, uh, Utini's. Yeah, with an with a Z at the end. <laughs> That sounds about right to me, and I'm glad that episode 192 is finally when the Living Force started becoming one of those like music discovery podcasts where they just, <laughs> we just like apparently take artists, listen to them, and like keep paying. So looking forward to it. When if you're in episode 400, that's all we'll be doing. But tonight, if you're unfamiliar with the Utinis, that's fine. It is our yearly award show where we nominate books and authors. I mean, Corey already said it so elegantly. I can't really make it better than that. I guess. Uh, but we do not. Sure, put an I guess. <laughs> I guess. At the oh, end. Wait, sure. I guess we kind of sort of decide what might be fine every year, and then we decide to, I guess, say it's cool. Um, it's or whatever. Sad. At the end of the show, you'll have all your teeny nominations, but most importantly, why we're doing this is because you're going to have the entire month of November as audience to <clears> vote. <throat> and you're going to be able to go to, I believe by the end of this week is my goal. So if you're watching live, hold on. It's going to be utini.com slash 2022 utinis. That's utini.com slash 2022 utinis, and you're going to be able to vote 
there, and then we will reveal the results, I believe, at the beginning of 2023. We are still finalizing the date of the Utini Awards. We will give you plenty of time. We want to make sure the votes are in. Another thing we want to make sure we announce tonight is next week's show, <clears throat> December 12th, will be the Convergence Roundtable. Zoraida Cordova's amazing book came out, and we are going to talk all about it next week. Similarly to our last roundtable, it is going to be one part. We're all going to be working <clears throat> on it together. And just to kind of give you a little tease, it's the first time I wrote a plot synopsis. So maybe tune in, maybe don't. I don't know. Charles, I got to say, it's it's freaking hard, dude. Like, I was writing it. I'm like, how does Charles do this for the last three years? <clears throat> um, but I support you. And I'm going to do what we promised. Thank you. But it's very I love hard. You. I love you. <clears throat> I know. Um, now, let's go, boys. What have we been loving this week? Let's talk a little bit about our weeks before we dive into the Star Wars news. I'm going to start just because it ties into Convergence. I got to interview Zoraida Cordova on Friday. Um, it yeah. was wonderful. She was so nice. We're editing the interview currently. I'm not sure if it'll be out by the time that the audio drops. But keep an eye out on the Lady Force feed. Um, yeah, we love talking to authors, and Zoraida was a freaking treat. Um. Sound like it was a baller interview too. Like she yeah. was a lot of fun and yeah. uh, she's obviously very hyped for the high Republic work, which is super mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just so refreshing hearing all the authors talk about their work on the high Republic. Like it's just such an unheard of initiative in a lot of ways, man. Like yeah. the authors just all stoked about it and it's so fun and such a huge honor that we get to talk to them like this. So, you know, um, super strong work putting it together, man. Thanks, yeah. dude. Yeah. Eric, is there a tease that you can give the people? Is there like a moment? Ooh, absolutely. I can give it a little tease. Um, I asked Zoraida uh, before she wrote for the higher public, what was her favorite thing about the initiative just as like a fan? Uh, because, you know, she was reading the books just as we were. And she does say which character is her favorite from the first phase. Some of you may know, but that's all I'll say right now. You got to stay tuned for the full interview. Mm. And she goes into uh, some of her favorites there. And of course, in addition with some of writing the initiative. And it was just a, a really, really lovely conversation. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that. Um, Charles, I got to go with you because I've seen pictures of what you were up to this week and it blew me away. <laughs> How was your week? What you been up to, Mr. Holidays? Operation Christmas has been underway for weeks now, <laughs> as you guys know. But this week, we we stepped it up even more. We do so much stuff during the holidays, but this week is something we look forward to. Uh, or this past week was something we look forward to throughout the whole year. We had an annual Christmas party that we started uh, when we started residency, actually. And so we got a bunch of our friends over, had the place decorated, had... Christmas punch and specialty cocktails that we looked up. We made a bunch of food, tried to make it a little fancier this year since now, you know, we're out of residency and it was, it was a little bittersweet because some of our guests who've been coming every year now are going to be going to fellowship and scattering across the, the country again. So uh, that's a little sad, but it was a ton of fun. And then, and then on top of that, we went to an outdoor Christmas market, got some more gifts for people. We went to a botanical garden uh here last night uh it's right on a sunday night people that's that's how we do christmas and <laughs> it was a ton of fun and do light, uh, do lights and stuff at the botanical gardens oh you went yeah yeah it's called show? the daniel yeah. stowe botanical garden it actually was very similar to the arboretum that is in Asheville, Corey. if you yeah. if you haven't made it to go do that that's fun i haven't i've heard that they have a big light show i mean Caitlin, we're looking at christmasy stuff to do um you should do it. it. I had a really good time there. It's all like synchronized lights to to music. It's really good. Oh, I love that stuff. Nice. Also, guys, we can let, let's call Charles out here a little bit, the three of us, because Charles posted a video of his Christmas setup, and like <laughs> this was it was in it was incredible. It looked it like was, he's trying to be cozy. TikTok famous, man. Like it was like it was just <laughs> yeah. so freaking cozy. It looked it looked yeah. like a lie. Like it like are you okay, Charles? You like living a lie right now? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was no, so warm and cozy little, and just like, yes. he like pan through his house and he's got his Christmas tree together. I'm really impressed with how seriously you guys take it. It looks it a beautiful. lot of fun. Thank you. Thank Very you. Yeah, we're, we're really enjoying it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. As, as I say, <laughs> I never heard that no, anywhere I, else. That's just something no, that I heard I that on the radio see. actually. And oh, uh, it must be yeah. catching on. Okay, cool. Yeah. Is this oh, before keep, or after Mariah Carey came on for all I want to do is I don't know. I don't think she was involved before, during and after. Um, I'm just excited to see it, Charles, because I, I just can't wait to be the guy that, that shows up unannounced and uninvited next year. 
Um, and then, you know, a couple <laughs> glasses of wine and I start talking about the government. It's going to be a great time and I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, and that's gosh. the story of the only time Eric came to my Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Corey, you got you got a mystery thing on our outline here. What were you up to this week? I have a mystery thing on the outline. You didn't write I, anything. <laughs> okay, I'm about to say, I'm about to say, I don't think I wrote anything on there. I haven't done much this week, man. Um, you know, Caitlin and I did go to... There was like a, it was like a Charles Dickens themed, like, uh, it was supposed to be like they decorated the town and had actors and stuff. And we went, we went downtown to like the Biltmore, like village is the name of the area in, in Asheville. It's like around the Biltmore estate and stuff, which if you've never heard of that, it's a huge Vanderbilt mansion that was here forever. And, uh, it was supposed to be like some kind of themed festival or something. We went and walked around and there was literally nothing. So I don't know what the hell they were talking about, <laughs> um, but there were lots of lights and <laughs> lights and stuff, literally nothing. There was nothing going on there. There were some, there were some tents set up selling like kind of typical Asheville art type of stuff. And mm -hmm. there was a, a sweet little old lady selling roasted chestnuts, which I've never seen before. It was pretty interesting. Did she cook them on an open Don't fire? <laughs> did. She did. Yes! I she win did. Christmas. That's right. Yeah, she did. <laughs> And uh, I, I didn't, we didn't get an A because they was, there was a huge line because apparently everybody else showed up for the thing and was also get like we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they Did came you get to new the new news chestnuts. Yeah. I got right. new news exactly. Chestnuts. Exactly. But they smelled like uh, they smelled really good. And somebody was in line that said that they tasted kind of like sweet potatoes. Weirdly. It's like soft. Or something. Oh. It's not like, a, it's wow. not like a, that's very I Asheville. I feel it's yeah, like it doesn't take this one food and they can taste like a different food. Yeah. It's really strange. I don't know. They said it, it's not, doesn't taste like, like peanuts. Like I kind of expected. It's more like, huh. I don't know, more like a desserty type food. I don't know. Oh, Whatever. Interesting. It's so funny. It, it, it sounded pretty fun. Anyway, it sounded pretty gross, honestly. So like, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> whatever. really talking <laughs> about it. I know I am. <laughs> Here's a question for you guys, because that reminded me. So the Christmas song, the chestnuts roasting on an open fire, that's my favorite Christmas tune. That's like my number one first round draft pick 101. Oh, my God. Mm. Are we going to do a draft? Is that Let's, what we're going to no, do? No, we don't do a draft. I, mean, I just I, we don't have to do that yet. But Christmas draft, let us know. Uh, what's your guys' favorite Christmas, Christmas draft? Song? Your favorite reindeer? Everyone builds their own like sleigh and which reindeer are full. Is that what we're going to do? Corey just gets the, the, all the ones that were the meanest to Rudolph so we can have like the toughest crew. Oh, exactly. <laughs> what's your favorite Christmas song, guys? My, mine, is the, mine is the Christmas song, quite literally. Like the, like the, one, the chestnut soap so roast and dude. fire one. Yeah. yeah, that one. That's my favorite. I like that one. I like, um, I like. I like White Christmas. Wow, that's I saying that out loud. You know, uh, maybe not. Maybe not the right this day and age. Still great to too. say. Uh, I'm gonna go to see say. that. I'm gonna go see that movie on the big screen on Saturday night. It's a great. That's it's a great movie. Nice. Yeah, it it's is. a great movie. I like. Uh, great song. I like. I like Let It Snow as well. Even though it's like mm. barely a Christmas song. It's very snow focused. I like that. Mm. Uh, right. Mine is any song from the um, from the soundtrack from Die Hard. So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really change. expected, really expected you to say Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by DMX. Honestly, like, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Metallica. Yeah. It was a great. It was a yes. great rendition. Absolutely. <laughs> I um I really like some of the some of the classic ones, even if they don't have words. I love Carol of the Bells. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of slaps, dude. Yeah. Wait, Trans Siberian Orchestra? Oh, I might go to a TSO show next weekend. Oh, yeah. nice. Yes. Nice. Yes. nice. It's in Wonderland, say, my dude. Yeah. Is it like which which rendition of the bells do you like? Do you like the one that's just kind of like more classic? Do you like the one with that shredding guitar solo the, in the middle? Uh, yes. No, they're pretty much all very well done. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of uh music soundtracks, I can't remember. Sorry. I can't remember what it's actually called, but that one song song from uh john williams of course from home alone uh i can't like the main home alone song so good i didn't oh, know john yeah. williams did home alone did oh yeah he? yeah wow it's amazing you know he yeah, also amazing. did uh indiana jones did oh no way well there's a new he one also did star wars um I'm surprised, Corey, that you didn't say <laughs> Melakaliki Maka after your Hawaiian trip. Yes. After Hawaii, wow. I, I did hear that song one time I was in Hawaii. I can't remember the context. It was just like playing randomly in a in a place, even though You're it was like, like All right. September. But it's whatever. in Christmas vacation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I love Christmas your, vacation. It's such a great movie. Look around, Ellen. We're at the threshold of hell. <laughs> <laughs> Why so is the carpet all wet, Todd? 
<laughs> I don't know, Margo. Those are great sweaters. If you if you can buy them for for you and your spouse, buy them. It's a hilarious joke, and like uh, only people who have watched that movie know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, Wes, speaking of the threshold of hell, how was your week other than losing Justin Verlander? Uh, good riddance, Justin. You and your <laughs> you and your horse loving wife can take your stupid electric F one fifty back to New York if it'll make it that far. Anyways, what that the is, hell is this? What the hell are we talking about? That is like, the most Texas sentence Wes has ever said in a, like every word. Take, that. Your, take your electric F one fifty and get the hell out of my state. Your horse loving wife. I'm not bitter. <laughs> Who is Kate Upton, by the way? <laughs> okay. So besides that, besides uh, losing, he's still a tiger in my heart. Yeah, that's fine. I <laughs> thought he was going to go there and retire, but um, I finally bit the bullet, and um, so I've been collecting uh, sports autograph memorabilia for um, years now, and I haven't mm-hmm. uh, actually displayed any of it. I've only displayed one jersey. And that's uh, Jeff Bagwell. Most of my stuff is going to be Houston based, um, but I finally purchased four jersey frames, and I'm going to display those. I'm going to put those all together. So, <gasps> number one, we yes. Have, oh shit! Backwards, but this is Bo Jackson. I got a Bo <gasps> Jackson autograph. Wow. Um, I know Bo. It's yeah. Bo. Yeah. Number two <laughs> is Akeem Olajuwon. Akeem Olajuwon. Dude. Everybody knows that guy. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> And three is Warren Moon. I got a Warren Moon jersey here. Oh, yeah, see that. jerseys, dude. Right. The yeah, second famous Warren and after Warren Pete. Number four I got is Craig Biggio. Craig, Craig Biggio. Biggio. So I have him and Bagwell are going to be right next to each other on my wall that's, over here. That's romantic. I love that. We, this is really weird, Wes, but I used to collect <laughs> baseball cards. I was a huge, huge baseball fan when I was a kid, and the coolest card I ever got was a Jeff Bagwell card with a piece of a game-worn jersey in the nice. card, it was part of the card, yes. and I probably still have it. And I should just give it to you because I don't care. I would love it, but that's you really should cool. definitely care. But I would, Charles, love it. you should not have admitted that online. You should have said, Wes, for Christmas this year, I was thinking of you. I saw this for sale, wow. it was a little and pricey, I can see, I can let it go you. for a couple hundred dollars, but I mean, <laughs> like, so I've had, I, I have. Been holding on to this since I was seven years old to give this to you now. <laughs> you knew you'd meet a Texan who hated electric F 150s <laughs> that really loved Jeff Bagwell. Uh, I don't hate them if you know the person who was driving it wasn't leaving the team that I ever so in love, but whatever. Yeah, all he did was win you two World Series. He didn't win us dress. nothing. He didn't win us nothing, Eric. Oh, okay, right? okay. He blew the all first right. game of the World Series. <laughs> Do you remember watching that? <laughs> <Riddance>. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited for Wes to get back into the sports season, but those sound like great weeks, guys. I will say, speaking of Wes's sports season, Wes continues to prove his unfiltered dominance over the Utini Fantasy League in the back half. Dear God. Um, Our glorious, wonderful Emma was playing against Wes this week, and she asked a bunch of us in the Utini sports chat, was like, hey, should I start the Bills defense or the Cowboys defense? And we were like, the Cowboys. The answer was... are playing great. And the Cowboys defense, hold on, did get her 25 points, which is amazing. So she only lost to West by 41. And the answer was, it doesn't matter who you start. Because I am victorious once again. <laughs> Thanks to Dude. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is a, is a madman. So it's really the only reason that I win. <laughs> You're so good. Um. I also won this week only because our buddy James was was more bad than me. It wasn't a victory. It was like both of us clearly wanted to lose, but <laughs> I wanted to lose slightly less. So I am not going well uh, in the Utini Fantasy League, but the playoffs are coming. JG in the chat, of course, is rooting for our buddy Oz, who drafted AJ Dillon in the first round. Uh, so JG can... <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to let him to live it down. So JG can go to the playoffs. To all of our listeners and viewers who are playing fantasy as the playoffs come in, I hope that you get your points. I hope your playoffs are set. I, I bestow upon you all the luck I do not have for myself. And I'm already sad that football season is looking like it's going to go to the end. But at least I can still hope and pray that Russell Wilson will end the season with more bathrooms in his house than touchdown passes. Sorry, Parker. Let's ride. 
Let's ride. If Broncos country, let's ride. <laughs> let's ride. <laughs> all right. With oh, that, dear. we want to give a quick thank you to our Patreon community who supports all this nonsense. Uh, head over to patreon.com slash UTD to enjoy such things as our actual documentary, our behind-the-scenes commentaries, our shows, the Star Wars archives, right when it drops. And I will say, uh, Charlie and I have been talking a lot about Ghost Crew episodes that will be coming back in full swing once we are moved into the great state that Charles is warming up for us. Um, all that stuff is over at patreon.com slash Utini. Thank you all so much. All right, before we jump into our Utini nominees, we did get a couple pieces of news, so it's time for a good old-fashioned Star Wars Weekly Roundup. It's the Star Wars Weekly Roundup! News time, everybody! <laughs> What the hell was that? <laughs> I don't plan what I'll say. I just got to go with it. And sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just, it, was all that, it was all that horse talk that led up to that. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> all right. So um, we got we got a little announcement this past weekend and today. Um, first of all, coming up this Thursday, I'm flip-flopping our stories in our outline. Uh, this Thursday, it was announced we will be seeing the first gameplay of the upcoming highly heralded title Jedi Survivor during the Game Awards on Thursday. So, like, we're doing our award show tonight, our nominees on Thursday night. It's the Game Awards. They give out Game of the Year, a bunch of things like that. And we will be seeing this sexy man, Cal Kestis, who is all grown up, uh, giving us some gameplay stuff. They released a few images. There's glorious sunsets. Uh, guys, how's our, how's our boy cal look right now uh what, what kind of vibes does this give you in advance of the gameplay reveal it makes me want to sing destiny's child that's what i want that's what i want to do right now Ooh, explain <laughs> okay. that please Des i'm a survivor oh, Destiny's Child. oh my god oh okay i got you no i don't know how it goes Corey. can you refresh no. my memory no i can't remember either you know it just, it just left me what do you know good timing he looks like a freaking stud i mean good lord yeah it's He's put on some pounds. Yep. He's got scars <laughs> on his face. If you if they zoomed in, yeah. at, he literally has a oh. face full of scars. And I'm like, I didn't see that in the first game. I yeah, mostly yeah. am uh, entranced by BD down there, though, because I do love yeah. BD1. But this is a beautiful, beautiful cover. And he looks ready to kick some butt, man. <clears throat> yeah, and does. I'm ready to kick yeah. some butt as Cal Kess. Yeah, you're ready <laughs> to kick butt. Um, it was also revealed, I believe we had thought about this, but this will exclusively be coming to... Uh, not really next gen anymore, current gen, the, the Series X and PS5, the current gen consoles, so they can actually finally use all the computing power of the modern day consoles. And I know yeah. <clears throat> some folks still can't get a hand of a hold of them. They're so expensive. I know that sucks. But as someone that has them, I'm not going to lie. I'm very excited to finally unleash <laughs> the full power of these things on this game because this thing could be yeah. incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, always kind of hard with uh, game development. Like, you kind of want it to be as good as it can be, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the graphics and stuff. And, you know, if we were to build these, a lot of developers have complained about that. If they build games that are, are cross-platform, like, they have to build it with a lot of limitations in line, right? So Exactly, yeah. it's It sucks, but, you know, uh, I think you said earlier today, Eric, that the new systems have been out for two years now. Is that right? So Yeah, over two years. Mm -hmm. I think two-ish wow. years is probably long enough to keep supporting old systems i mean yeah the, te the technology yeah. changes really fast so you know Absolutely. by the time they make it into a console anyway it's already kind of out of date so you know i'm uh, yeah. i'm very pleased and let's let's not like let's not beat around the bush that the original game looked incredible and it was old oh, yeah. software so <laughs> Absolutely. this is i can't wait for this you know what i'm really excited about uh dress options other than ponchos guys yeah. i mean Talk I about like it. yeah we got ponchos, some leaks today but... Oh, did yeah. we? You get, yeah, you just get, you just it. get, you just get various, um, you just get various pants with differing numbers of pockets. That's what you get. <laughs> How cargo -y are your cargo? Pants? Oh my god, exactly. cargo! No, no, I want, I want knee length boots and cargo shorts for Kel Kestis. That's that's what he's doing. What, what kind of cargo are you hauling? <laughs> um, but yeah, Charles, you did mention. I don't know if we. I don't think I, I pulled the pictures, but there were some leaks today that that they're they're basically. <clears throat> Official. They're not, they're not going to be released. Listen, yet. we we changed our show. We can talk about leaks if we want. We can do right, more now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the DLC or the pre-order bonuses, rather. Corey's favorite. Corey loves pre-ordering games. It's his favorite mm. thing. Um, <laughs> you. Yeah. The <laughs> Don't freaking pre-order. Except for Star Unless, Wars. Star Wars gets a pass. Star Wars. That's gets a right. Pass. Um, they announced there's some cosmetics that are going to be released, including a uh, Han Solo like jacket, essentially very much a New Hope. Um, Luke's. 
uh, yellow victory jacket and the old Ben, like, hermit-esque look. Or, I guess, more so Kenobi from the show. As well as, like, Luke's lightsaber, Obi-Wan's lightsaber, Han's blaster. Like, a lot of classic skins. And it's funny because this is technically an in-canon project. But I do love, we talked a little bit about this in Slack, but I want to talk about it now. Like, do we care? That this is not canon. It's a video Dude, game. I Look at don't, this. This is awesome. I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, thank you. I, okay, listen, <laughs> for video games, it, like the only thing that, okay, if I was going to say that I don't care about canon video games, and that's not entirely true. The only sure, thing sure, that I sure. care about in canon video games is like that the story like is not it's not super retcon heavy. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. they, if, they, yeah. if they come in and like, like Luke has been dead for like 10 years or something and we're like... <laughs> It's like Return of the Jedi era. Like, that's stupid. Yeah. Don't do that. But, like, yeah. for all the, the extra cosmetics. stuff, like add-ons and cosmetics and stuff, who cares, yeah. man? This is fun. I, I would love to be able, like, to unlock, like, like bright pink shorts, like, from the from the boom mic guy. <laughs> yes! Oh, my God! <laughs> yeah. The lightsaber is the boom be, mic. Yeah, really the lightsaber is the... That would just be so goofy and funny. And, like, I do kind that's of like miss... like Tony the, Hawk's <laughs> Underground 2 type stuff. <laughs> I miss I miss a little bit of the old campiness of video games where you could do yeah. stuff like do you remember like you remember like giant head mode and like yeah. oh yeah the original the NBA like jam. paintball game mode mode from nope, the uh, yep. the old James Bond game right like oh those, yeah that goofy stuff was fun wow. that'd be fine if that, that stuff was, was in Star Wars yeah so I'm all for this but what do we have here we have several things right we have yeah. we have Han, Hans classic you black vest said hand dude how much did say hand hand's vest <laughs> what is the what is the is that what is that green? Is that green what's the droid with him what's oh, the, oh so, so like bb just one? has yes yeah yoda yeah. Or, in, or indoor maybe indoor yeah, yeah. Maybe green ish or, or dagaba yeah and then han's uh deal 44 which we haven't yep. talked about yep. yet he's carrying a gun <laughs> yeah we get yeah. blasters is it gonna be like rocking a blaster? That'd be super fun. I'm like so Mr. ready for uh, yeah. you know, Kyle um, yeah, Kyle Katarn. Yeah, that's like Kyle Katarn, baby. Kyle Katarn. Yep. Ooh, Kyle. Oh, Kyle Katarn. <laughs> Kyle Katarn. That's all right. That's is, is Kyle Kyle that they, they talk about Kyle Katarn in Texas. <laughs> oh, Kyle Katarn. Yeah. Oh, Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> I do. I do like Luke's jacket because <laughs> yeah. he that never got enough play. Obviously, it just got the one it's scene, so awesome. and then it's in the mm -hmm. comics, and he wears yeah. it well in the comics. But yeah, it's a great jacket. Yeah, and then absolutely. that BD looks like R two if you look. Yeah, for sure it does. Yeah, yeah. Hard Astro. And, yeah, the Astro cosmetic. And it's kind of the and the lightsaber is obviously Anakin's lightsaber, Ray's lightsaber, Luke's lightsaber. Who the hell's lightsaber it is? The Skywalker the saber? saber. What do we call yeah, it? Sky, the I think saber. The Skywalker saber. Yeah. The Skywalker saber. Yeah, yeah, it looks like that too. But it's it's kind of weird and elongated though, right? Like it looks kind of odd. Yeah, you it's got to be for like um, for whatever they're like ray tracing. Mm -hmm. the, maybe the width just has to be like a certain thing yeah it does it looks, look a little thinner it looks a little weird but, yeah but for charles most importantly the obi-wan saber looks like too screen accurate um it looks like, good and i like yeah, the goggles good. too on cal's neck i mean oh i missed the I oh yeah the first time yeah yeah no it's like straight up obi-wan from the kenobi the end of the kenobi yeah. series you can just pretend you're obi-wan love it no I, is, that's exactly uh... what i'm gonna do <laughs> that's right why is this like Phantom Menace Obi Wan lightsaber though, and not like, not like that era Obi Wan lightsaber. That's a good. That's I a think good that question. era looks too close to Luke's, because like, that's <clears> honestly why I haven't bought it myself. Is I think like they're they're similar. Or I get no, actually that's his Return of the Jedi saber. That's his Return that's of the Jedi point. saber. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. This one looks rad. Good, weird choice. This one actually <laughs> is this. This is Obi Wan's lightsaber, right? It looks like yeah, Qui Gon's from lightsaber. It's from Phantom Menace. Qui Gon's yeah looks pretty similar to Obi Wan's yeah. from TPM though. Yeah, but that's yeah. why. What, and there's then there's the gun. Do we see that gun anywhere? I've not seen that either. That looks interesting. I'm not sure. Isn't that but... that might be the one Kenobi was wielding in the TV series for a short time? Oh, yep. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point. And JT makes so. a good point in the chat <clears throat> that the biggest reveal of these leaks, which I'm assuming are probably going to be confirmed on Thursday <clears throat> night during the reveal, because they'll say <clears throat> you know pre order now. I'm assuming. Assuming, yeah. Um, is I'm that there are blasters in the it. game? Like we said, that has not yeah. been do it. That, that has do. not been revealed yet. <laughs> so I'm stoked. I'm stoked for this. Um, I believe a release date of March 15th has been floating around Steam and stuff. So, um, uh, everyone that has like I know there's a lot of spring breaks in college and things like that around that time. So, mm -hmm. uh, plan your PTO accordingly, fellow adults. <laughs> a reformation <laughs> of uh, Utini Game Nights feels like it's in the works. Oh this man! New Star Wars game. I mean, oh, that's it, right? We yeah. absolutely do. That'd be that would be, be super fun. 
I live yeah. in I'll live in New Zealand that day before. So yeah, yeah. baby. <laughs> Ooh. Although I make it on a PS5, so I can't do that trick. But we'll see how it works. But of course, <clears throat> before that, I believe two weeks before that, we are getting now another reveal: uh, Jedi Battle Scars, which is a book that takes place between Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. <laughs> And we finally got, I say finally, there's months left to go. Come on, it's fine. Uh, we got a cover and a synopsis reveal officially. Um, so here's the cover. I'm going to read the synopsis. And then I want to talk about this cover a little bit. But the synopsis reads as follows. Cal Kestis has built a new life for himself with the crew of the Stinger Mantis. Together, Cal's crew has brought down bounty hunters, defeated Inquisitors, and even evaded Darth Vader himself. More important, Marin, Seer, Grease, and Faithful Droid BD-1 are the closest thing Cal has had to a family since the fall of the Jedi Order. Even as the galaxy's future grows more uncertain by the day, with each blow struck against the Empire, the Mantis crew grows more daring. On what should be a routine mission, they meet a stormtrooper, determined to chart her own course with the help of Cal and the crew. In exchange for help starting a new life, the Imperial Deserter brings word of a powerful, potentially invaluable tool for their fight against the Empire. And even better, she can help them get it. The only catch... Pursuing it will bring them into the path of one of the Empire's most dangerous servants, the Inquisitor known as the Fifth Brother. Can the Imperial Deserter truly be trusted? And while Cal and his friends have survived run-ins with the Inquisitors before, how many times can they invade the Empire before their luck runs out? <laughs> Sorry, I realized that was a closing. Cool, 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 yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, so a fun synopsis, but let, let's hit this cover first for our audio listeners. Imagine a video game book cover, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, I was like, gonna say this is a yeah, this is yeah. a interesting co cover. It looks very video gamey. Like it's very yeah. stark blue, green, and red. Like there's no yes, there's no very clear like, nuance here. I mean, it's just yeah, like it it's drawn real. though. I would say it, it's drawn. <clears throat> yeah, it, looks, said, it looks like you know? a, a combo it's between a video game cover and like a, a Drew Struzan poster. Ooh, like it yeah. doesn't like they're yeah. going yeah. for that kind of feel. Yeah. I, I hope that's I a sticker ask, too. So, I don't want that to be on the cover. I want that to be a removable sticker. And in the years you before like Jedi that Survivor, Matt Gray in white just stuck a circle in the middle of your cover. No, I don't. <laughs> just put it right oh, over man. someone's face, right? The Target exclusive, just right. Yeah, Mike right Wazowski, it, just face. right in his face. <laughs> Mike Wazowski. But yeah, why? Why does everyone always steal Han's look? Man, Seer is totally just dressed exactly yeah, like true. Han Solo. Vests, yeah. man. They work. Everyone wears vests. There's a lot of vests yeah. in Star Wars. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm excited for question. Marin though. That's Deborah yeah. Wilson. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, the most underutilized yes. character in the previous game, without a doubt. Like I yes. was so disappointed that like the game ended so fast after you picked her up as a companion. And like, yeah. Um, so this will be fun. This will be fun. Um, I hope that this game. Um, I hope they realize how successful the first one was. I mean, it won a bunch of awards mm -hmm. and stuff. So I hope the yeah. first one was so successful that this one is like like 10 X, you know, like, I hope it's longer. Yeah. I hope it's yep. bigger. I hope it's more take, takes bigger risk. I mean, if they're adding a, a blaster, that's already a huge step in the right direction. Like of yeah. making it unique and cool. Yeah. And I hope there's a battle pass. <clears throat> I hope there's a battle Royale mode. Um, I hope that I hope battle that, I hope Royale. The, now we're yeah, talking. I hope, the, <laughs> I hope the 3d map is a little freaking easier to use. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Zepho. Zepho, if I, if there's another map like Zephos, I'm going to rage. That'll be the game night that I play. Yeah. What if I told you it could just be 2d and show you where you are. Listen, <laughs> right. I know we want to make a hologram and it's star Wars. Well done. Awesome. Love you. Don't, don't do that again. <laughs> I'm yeah, please I'm don't do that again. I wouldn't be. It was almost. It was so memeable, though. I almost wouldn't be surprised if yeah. they did. To be honest, like. <laughs> oh yeah. But, yeah, um, it's it's fun. Be fun. Yeah, the book. The book is a good idea too. Is it? It, yeah. it looks like it's gonna be a prequel to the second game yep. too. Is the way it looks. It takes so. place between them. Yep, and it, you get, yeah, it comes out on the third. I think you got about <clears> two weeks or so to read it, and then the game comes out. I think that's a honestly a great strategy because for too. most folks, I think that's a great time to like read a full book. Um, then you get really excited, you get caught up with the story, and then it's kind of like a prequel, and then you're right into the game. I, I yeah, we're, we're pretty critical, I think, of of Del Rey's marketing strategies at times. This is solid. I gotta give my flowers when you earn them. This is a great idea. We'll we'll see. I mean, this still this is still EA, right? This is EA yeah. Dice, right? Yeah, Dice. Yeah, respawn. Oh, uh, respawn. 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 Okay, all right. Well, it's yep, different. It's good. a different group entirely, so they're a little better. Yeah. So we'll see. 
And on the bright side, books have <clears throat> never really uh, gotten delayed. So there's no way they can mess up the timing. <laughs> yeah, no way. I, I don't see how that could possibly happen. So Oh, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slow zoom on the face. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm excited. It's, exciting. it's it always exciting fun. to see. I, I was going to say, too, it's always exciting to see books like, alongside games as an initiative, too, because like yeah. you can always add something a little interesting and some little piece of lore that you can like pick up going through the going through the game and like it's it's one of those things too that's fun to talk about with with folks too because you know there's a lot of um there's a lot of mainstream players that play these types of games and mm -hmm. like it's a it's a great entry point for books for folks because they they finish the game and they still have that sort of they want more story right so then they google something like how to read yeah. star wars books and they end up <laughs> on our side and yeah. you know it's every, more, every more uh every other type of star wars content we get like is another gateway into the huge world of books and comics which is always fun so it's especially yeah. cool to see them continue doing these types of game books and stuff i wonder if they're successful actually that's a good that's an interesting question <clears throat> i again out of data i would assume this jedi survivor book I think this will sell more copies than any other non higher public book in the year. Mm. I think. Maybe, maybe I think so. that people are again like walking through Walmart. Mm. You're you're getting the game, and then you see, oh, that's the character on the on cover. Cover like that yeah. works. Sometimes it's just yeah. that simple. Yeah. They have they ha it has that extra um, an extra addition of having to be on a video game. Whether it's and when you look at it, if you saw a Star Wars book and you didn't know exactly yep. what it was, you probably wouldn't pick yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, I feel I like I saw really... a lot of Battlefront books out and stuff like in the past mm -hmm. yeah you know what's really nice about the prediction that you just made eric what's that <clears throat> we will never hold never. you accountable for it <laughs> I mean, isn't that great we'll forget yeah. about <laughs> it in a couple weeks you literally have no just, idea just like be right <clears throat> i don't know who cares I, know. I don't need accountability i need predictions <laughs> i need hot takes <laughs> uh we don't need more than hot takes and accountability is books and make sure everyone is going to the Utini release calendar over at utini.com to get all your pre-orders in. The High Republic Starlight Stories, the collection of all the short stories, comes out. Here's the thing. Maybe December 13th. Maybe tomorrow. I get or an never. Amazon shipping one notification that mine's coming two. out tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, mine's coming tomorrow. Um, That's cool. Who knows? Um, I'm excited about it. But what we do know is the High Republic, the Battle of Jeddah, the audio drama uh, by George Mann, comes out January 3rd. So have your have your holiday celebrations, make your resolutions that you're absolutely going to follow this time, and then make sure you get the Battle of Jeddah January 3rd. I'm sure George Mann has some amazing stuff uh, ready for us. All right. We're talking about 2023 already. So it's time to go back and talk about 2022 to talk about the Utini nominations. We did this last year. It's always one of my favorite times of the year. And before we get into the actual nominees, I want to give a little behind the scenes of how we came up with these nominations. I think that's fair, right? I think we should always kind of let the audience in on how it worked. Um, this year, how it worked is we came up with all of our Utini nominations, which we'll go over to in a second, the categories. And then for our staff, we opened it up to free nominations. Anyone on our Utini staff could nominate in any category. And then once we took about I don't know, two or three weeks, I compiled all of them. And then we had a staff vote and we ranked them all. And we've come up with about five um nominees for every category and now everyone will be able to vote on them as a community and i'm just very i'm very excited about it uh this is my first year running the utinis and uh i mean Corey, you've seen it on uh, you've seen it every year behind the scenes uh how do you think it's going so far how am i doing how would you I rate think me? you're i think you're doing a good job i mean we have um okay. we have a huge we have a huge we have a huge team this year right yeah Excellent. i know and I put, put me on the spot on the I was show. I, mean, I was I was going to pull you aside and talk about you know some stuff afterwards. <laughs> oh, but, oh I know, knew that. I felt public, that coming. So, yeah, no, um, I was gonna, I was just going to say that like this year feels like more legitimate than it ever has because we have like forty people on the team now. So like mm -hmm. we have a lot of people putting in the nominations and voting on the staff side of things, and like we we put a lot of thought and effort into this type of stuff, right? We don't just kind of mm -hmm. wing it, really, right? I mean. Like uh, I think the the same care that we've put into stuff like the you know the first books you should read and what are some of the best mm -hmm. books period and how we do our reviews and our ranking like all that type of I don't know thought I think you no know, everybody takes this type of stuff seriously we don't just kind of like oh I feel like you are Chris is my favorite character like, it's not simple <laughs> right. you know yeah we put a lot of thought into these so you know I I it's very rare that I genuinely feel like the nominations that our staff ends up coming together for are like not the right ones if that makes sense yeah. so yeah you know, in a varied opinion so 
you know, I think this year, like it was very clear, I think what most of the categories were. Um, and as the data sort of to come together, like it was very interesting to see how divided some of the staff was about some yeah, of the things. Absolutely. I think that, I think that, uh, I think we have really good nominations this year and that, uh, you know, mathematically it's going to kind of stand a better test than it has in the past, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So without any further ado, we're going to go this category by category. Uh, with any of the categories that are a little questionable, we'll explain a little bit about what it means, and then we'll just go through the nominations. So totally randomly, let's see. Um, Wes, why don't you start us off with our first category of the 2022 Utini? Oh, music! Oh. There's music! Okay, <laughs> so first category, let me... Let me make sure that this isn't too loud for everybody so you can hear my yeah. sweet, Let's sweet the chat. voice. Yeah, sounds- my <clears throat> sweet, sweet voice. Okay. So first category of the 2022 Uteenies from Utini is Character of the Year. Um, I'm a little biased on mine, but I will go through the nominees. Nominee number one is Markion Rowe. Number two... Mar- Marshawn Rowe. Markion yep. Rowe. <laughs> Thank you, Wes. <laughs> El- Elzar Man. Stellan Geos. My boy. Avar Chris. And, oh, dang, I might change my answer. Orla Jereni. So, gentlemen. Wow. That is a, uh, that is a solid group of five characters. <clears throat> That are on the, the character of the year. <laughs> obviously, off yep. the High Republic. Obviously, um, yep. Yeah, I, I mean, what Obi Wan's not on here? Anakin's <laughs> not on here. <laughs> I mean, we did get an Obi Wan and Anakin book yeah. uh, this year. Rue but... Quornum didn't make the the, the first the Rug, first level. I, but got, I nominated Rue. <laughs> it was great. Know. But um, yeah, uh, so coming straight from from my picks i was like markion row markion row all the way but as i'm going down the list orla jerini i am a big orla jerini fan i liked her yeah. a lot so yeah, mm. yeah so, i think uh, it's i think it's hard not to pick original characters for like character yeah. of the year just because yeah. like they're always i don't know whenever, whenever a new character shows up that they're always super interesting and and fun and yeah. uh you know this has been a good year for High Republic as well. I mean, we got a lot of the OG characters from last year kind of like uh, mm-hmm. like really expanded on. So I think, you know, it seems like an obvious choice to me to put all the, you know, to make all the nominations to High Republic. So yeah. it wasn't intentional. That mathematically no. happened. But, no. you know. <laughs> and we had um, some Phase 2 characters that were in there as well. I know uh, uh, Fan, uh, Fan 2 from Convergence got nominated in there. Um, we had some other folks. Also, this is a great mm. time for me to say. I meant to say this at the top. Uh, full spoilers possibly for 2022 books and comics i wasn't um, gonna say anything i was yeah, just gonna yeah, say like, go for it i was gonna read it off the name the quote or whatever yeah. and that Most was it of them are from the fallen star let's be honest if you haven't read the fallen star by now we're gonna say what happens in the book because there's some stuff um <laughs> but yeah stuff. there's some stuff that happens um i which i i will say this is a great uh, cast of characters stellan geos was one of my nominations i mean uh, he shows up a couple times in the nominations. Um, all I mean, star. Gosh, all star. Mm-hmm. All star. Uh, G- yeah. Geode uh, did not make the cut this year. He did, did last year. He did. I do not think he was there this year. <clears throat> he did. Also, former winners are ineligible. So if you have some of your favorites that were very clearly had great years in different categories, think to yourself, did they win a Utini previously? Oh. Because if they did, they are not on this list. Yes, you can do that when you make the rules, Eric. You can just. <laughs> I sure can. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Charles, take us away for category number two. All right, category number two for the 2022 Utinis is moment of the year, and so this was just anything from a book or comic that was phenomenal, and there were a lot of really good ones actually this year. I found myself having a really hard time voting once we had some some nominees because the short list is incredible. Uh, the very first moment of the year is Stellan's sacrifice in the Fallen Star. So talk about spoilers. Um, <laughs> and thank you for starting the list with this so that now I have to read the rest of them while choking back tears. Mm-hmm. Uh, option number two is Estala Maru holding the Starlight Beacon together in Marvel's The High Republic. Another really sad moment, really cool moment. Um, that's high on the list. 
Orla Jereni's fate in the fallen star. Man, these are just all sad. What in the world? Did nothing happy and uplifting happen? <laughs> We're a tortured um, company. <laughs> really? Uh, we have Yoda's entrance in the Battle of Corellia in Midnight Horizon. Absolutely epic. Thank you, DJO, for that one. And lastly, we have the leveler revealed in Trail of Shadows. So again, we are looking at the High Republic moments here. It seems, it seems that we're well. I don't know, because um, Brotherhood had some great moments, especially the it very did. end. The very end was a good <clears throat> moment, and I'm sure it was picked. It, was. it just didn't make the cut. Well, there's um, a particular moment in Brotherhood that, frankly, I'm surprised didn't get nominated. But we don't have to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Corey, we know Corey picked that one right off the bat. Anakin, pull the car over. <laughs> Padme, there's no top. Now there is. Uh, anyway, those no, yes. those five though. I, I thought it was interesting. I, I loved as I was you know tallying all these. It was very fascinating to kind of see the makeup of these. And there was a lot of even uh, numbers with with a lot of the nominees. And I love this because a lot of them, yes, were sad, like you said, Charles, but there's also a lot of, like, reveals of hope. Like, Yoda coming in was great. Maru kind of holding at the last second really kind of showed what the High Republic was going to in Wave 3. And I thought it was really interesting that these these are early moments in the year, too. Usually Oscars, things like that, your movies later, that gets a better nomination. But a lot of the stuff came from early in the year, which just shows you the staying power of a lot of yeah. these stories. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And it's it's always hard to go back and try to remember a lot of the things that happened in the year. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons it's fun to do this Utinis because it's almost like just a celebration of the previous year, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. But uh yeah, it's hard to go back and remember these things. And like I I honestly it's really cool to see like what different staff remember about the books because they like they landed so well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Stuck with folks. You can just kind of pull that out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um it's yeah. really fun. So yeah, a lot of really great moments this year as well. Um, another category that the High Republic just swept away. Um, <laughs> there was some big stuff that happened. It was fun. Fallen Star had a lot of stuff. Um, you yeah. know, there were a lot of nominations for that book specifically. So, oh yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Absolutely. Uh, Corey, take us away now. We we have some not High Republic stuff here. Uh, book cover of the year. Book cover of the year. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. Pretty, pretty covers. Uh, we have uh, we have five books for book cover of the year. The first is Midnight Horizon uh, by DJO. Excellent, excellent cover. The blues and purples in that one were fantastic. Mm -hmm. Path of Deceit, and also a strong cover. Oh, you have all these covers, Wes. Oh my God, Wes, go. yes! Midnight Horizon, Path of Deceit. Both of these were excellent. Um, Path of the Sea, man, that blue. I forgot about these. It looks God, so good. It's gorgeous. Uh, next is the Princess and the Scoundrel. It's the next cover we have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not not oh. quite as pretty of an image there. <laughs> this is the there we there go. Is. There Sorry, we go. Wes. There we go. <laughs> Throw you under the bus there, Wes. Um, yeah, Princess and the Scoundrel was this year as well. Then we have the Out of Prince, The Fallen Star is the next book. Yeah, and I'm stalling for time slower. to give say Wes time to find <laughs> yeah. the image. The variant cover of the fallen star. As I struggle to open this envelope that is a very <laughs> tightly sealed the cover that really knocked our socks off this year that was good enough oh, to make it's not it not even that good. category. <laughs> to make it into the category that you would never believe is it, it came with a beanie. This book. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. cheating. Uh, no, wait, the beanie is not nominated. I want to make sure if there's no category fraud. I know. Listen, they slid the cover over, and a beanie just happened to be also there. Uh, out of print, the Fallen Star. This was really an incredible cover. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was very good. The special edition covers always tend to knock your socks off, and that was very, yep. very good. And the last cover for this category of this year is any minute now you will find out the last category the last book in the category. there it is it's tempest runner by kevin scott very good yeah. bronchitis is the a star book, wars story <laughs> yeah because yeah. the audio drama came out in 2021 mm. but the script book came out in 2022 so it it yeah that's true it does count and the script book does look it looks the same kind of it's slightly different the the, yeah. the shape and stuff is a little different but yeah, those are the books. Midnight Horizon, Path of Deceit, The Princess and the Scoundrel, and Out of Print Editions of the Fallen Star, and then Tempest Runner, book covers of the year. We have some good ones. The covers are getting better yeah. and better. 
every oh, year. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Like they're literally getting good at good Those covers, are out which of is why. Ones, though, man. Yeah, out of yeah. print ones always. I'm always sad that they do them for Phase Two, and it, and I, I mean, it's it's got to be a money thing, right? Like, if they sold well, they'd <clears> make them. Is yeah. It really, that simple. No. It I seems like it's probably a big it's probably a big ordeal to do special editions of covers oh, yeah, and stuff definitely. because you have to like you have to like do like hey, a se- separate printing process entirely yeah, I yeah, imagine. Yeah. So right. I really like yeah. the idea of variant covers in general though. Yeah. I, me too. Oh, I love it. I love How it. How has comics been able to do it for so long? That's an interesting question. Well, True. funny you should ask, Corey, because that is our next category for the twenty twenty two Utinis. Let's jump right into here, and Wes, I will vamp so hard for you, my <laughs> dude. Um, <laughs> all right. The first nominee for the Utini 2022 comic cover of the year is the High Republic number 12. This is the main comic line, and I will describe it for our audio listeners here. It is Lorna D. holding that lightsaber with strength. Excellent. Excellent. First cover. The second one is a very memorable Eye of the Storm number one. This was the Markian Rowe mini series uh, by Charles Soule. And this gives us Markian Rowe holding a yellow lightsaber blade, staring up into the dark, rainy abyss. That's where he's on that cliff or something, right? He's on a cliff. Pondering the history of his people. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Thinking about what he can do. <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's blurry. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> no, that looks great. Eye okay. of the Storm, Thanks, number Charles. one. <laughs> Next up, we have Darth Vader 26. Sorry, Darth Vader 26. An amazing look uh, of the Into the Sand arc which you may remember has darth vader being surrounded by the one thing that he hates more than anything in this galaxy nay the universe at large sand that's right look at that Mm. look at that star wars 26 it's like a poster for the mummy (laughs) oh my god (laughs) (laughs) that's a movie i've not thought about in a very long Long time long time that's a movie Thought Thought about about next long, up, long, long time. Next uh, up was kind of a shoe in. Uh, Steve McNiven did a variant uh, for a Charles Soule comic that was Star Wars 25. This was the comic where Charles Soule did a bunch of short stories featuring all the characters he's written for Marvel so far. And this cover uh, actually featured all those characters. We got uh, Luke in the victory jacket we were talking about earlier. We got Ren, we got Vader, we got Obi Wan, we got Poe Dameron and Black Squadron. This is maybe the most full cover we've had uh, thus far. Kira, Momin, all those guys. Ooh, Ray's on um, there. Ray's on there. He wrote some Ray. <clears throat> so we got Star Wars twenty five, and we end with possibly the most suggestive cover in the history of Star Wars comics with Eye of the Storm number two, the variant. Um, this is called, I don't know, the Beat chain it. daddy cover, if you will. Oh, <laughs> I was going to call it the BDSM variant. Yeah, but, this is Mark yeah. Yonro on a throne, casually holding a chain. And who's the chain around, may you ask? I don't know. It goes out of the reader's view. Oh, it is the um, reader. The reader is. It is the reader. The reader is the, you know, it's got us by the neck. Daddy. So emblazon our, our, our final, our final <laughs> cover. Talk about a hook. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Daddy Row. That's right, JG. Uh, so those <clears throat> are the nominees for for cover. Um, Do you remember when this cover came out and all of Twitter went crazy? And, and absolutely. We just, like, it was a strange time, honestly. It was very odd. Oh, it was an it was odd a strange one. <laughs> time. There was a lot of fan fiction like imagery that came out after that. And people were just like sharing stuff on Twitter. I'm just like, oh, why yeah. is... Martian Rowe is like suddenly <laughs> really hot. Like, why? Why is this a thing? That's well, funny. you know what, listeners Star Wars and Twitter, viewers, strange place. <clears throat> if you think that's the one that does it for you, you read those fanfics. You can vote at utini.com slash twenty twenty two utinis. Um, uh, but honestly, an amazing look at covers, comics art, and comic covers are such an art in and of themselves. Um, mm-hmm. they could they can be so static, <clears throat> they cannot work. But all of these, I think, are just very strong. 
and again, a mixture of High Republic and non High Republic, which is always you know, fun. Speaking of the mummy, uh, that bug on the front of uh, what's her name's uh, Lorna D. outfit right there, Lorna D's chest. Go back to the yeah, yeah. That looks like the that looks like the oh, beetle. Oh, the mummy. Like a scarab beetle. <laughs> a scarab, beetle. <laughs> a scarab beetle. Yeah, oh, I yeah. see it. I see it. <laughs> oh, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I don't remember well, anything about the mummy. The only thing that I remember was that really <laughs> terrifying, gross scene that I remember as a kid, where like the bug is like under the skin, and they have to like uh, stab it and get it out. That was you know that who was, would play a good Mark Hero? Brendan Fraser. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Brendan Fraser. Why not? Right now, put him in everything. Put him in everything. <laughs> right I say. Now. Oh dear. I Wes. Love him, <laughs> All right, well, from, from scarab beetles to beautiful butterflies, Charles, our next category, is one of the most lauded, I would say, in the, on all of the Utinis. Yeah, sure. I agree entirely. The <laughs> next category is the social butterfly. It took a lot for me to not reference another movie there. Uh, <laughs> I don't even remember what that movie's called. Was it A Bug's Life? Is that A Bug's Life? Now yeah. I'm just fully referencing Ants. it. I'm a beautiful butterfly. Um, <laughs> oh, right. there it is. So social butterfly, this is for basically the uh, content creator within the Star Wars publishing world who uh, does the best job engaging with fans. And yep. that could be on any platform in any, you know, modality, whatever it is. It's yep. just people who go out of their way to interact with the fandom because that's obviously super important. And yep. uh, I think we all feel special when we have those moments with the people who are creating the things that we love. So Social Butterfly nominees for the year are George Mann, my buddy George Mann, uh, John Jackson Miller, which was a really, actually a name I was surprised to see on the list for, I think, obvious reasons. Just doesn't create as much nowadays, but he is such a social butterfly. Like he oh, really yeah. does. He, he really is just exactly that. Uh, he loves to, loves to talk about the things he's created with people. Uh, next on the list is Mike Chen, author of this year's Brotherhood, and he did a wonderful, wonderful job on the press circuit for that this year. Uh, Kelly Knox is yeah! our next nominee, who is one of the best Star Wars Twitter follows, I think, yeah. out there. Oh, now Dad jokes out the wazoo. Yes. Mm. Amazing. Yes. Thank you, Wes, for for getting these headshots. Are you stacking the vote, Wes? Just <laughs> Kelly's the only one that gets the photo? Yeah, well, exactly. yeah, way more if I knew these were coming. Uh, <laughs> Kelly Knox. And then our last nominee is Charles Soul, who has been, you know, just pumping out stuff and mm -hmm. uh, for years now. I mean, he's been... The pace at which he is creating content is genuinely insane to me. Uh, yeah. And he, he always does, you know, really interesting interviews. So... Going back through people then, Social Butterfly, that is George Mann, our good friend from the UK, John Jackson Miller, author of arguably one of the greatest Star Wars books ever written, Kenobi, <laughs> Mike Chen, Kelly Knox, and last but not least, Charles Soule. Ah, it really is special that the, that the creators reach out to us. Previous winners, of course, Daniel Jose Older and Kevin Scott, I believe the last two years, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. um, are all still very active, um, but we <clears throat> absolutely love this award, and we appreciate uh, that the occasional toxicity of Star Wars has not driven you all mad, so we love you all very much. <laughs> Sorry, all it's right. not funny. <laughs> our next category. Uh, selfishly, I want to take this one. I'm going to screw up our order because I love these so much. It is our quote of the year. Uh, one of the harder ones, I think. You're gonna have, yeah, you're gonna have to speak slow so I can find exactly where this is in the book. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I'll find the page oh here on Google. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Our first quote comes from the Fallen Star by Claudia Gray. There's a quote by Stellan Gios, and it says this: "This is what hope is. It isn't pretending that nothing will go wrong if only we try hard enough." It's looking squarely at all the obstacles in the way, knowing the limits of our own power and the possibility of failure. And moving ahead anyway that is how we must proceed with hope <laughs> the next one also comes from the fallen star stellan held up one hand in farewell wondering whether he would ever see bell zedifar again at least in this moment he'd be granted he'd been granted a glimpse of the great jedi knight bell would become the next is from brotherhood by mike chen through the mist two silhouettes emerged the glow of their blades giving off enough light to eliminate any doubt of who approached of who could pull off something as impossible as this rescue. There stood Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, brothers in arms of the Jedi Order, 
and together, they were unstoppable. The next, also from Brotherhood. This was Skywalker and Kenobi as they should be. A team built on emotion and intellect, bravado and control, fire and ice. And finally, from Midnight Horizon by Daniel Jose Older. The name tasted like tears on her lips, but it also felt like light. The way she felt about Lula was a physical presence in her body, like the Force. I love this category, guys, because I think, honestly, all five of these really show the breadth of all the books we got. We have good point. hope and epicness. Mm. We have hope of the future. We have fun battles. We have love stories. We have sadness. It's like, we really <laughs> got a lot this year in Star Wars, didn't we? Like, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, did. A lot of nostalgia, too. Um, yeah. Like, there's a lot of throwbacks to older content, which is... This we have not seen a lot of that. I think in canon. So this year was really fun to see a lot of uh, a lot of references to other Star Wars works. I think yeah. was fun, like you know, especially Brotherhood and a lot of the throwbacks to the original Kenobi novel. And it was fun. fun Absolutely, year. so good, man. Um, <clears throat> uh, it I'm seems like the again. Fallen Star is really gonna <laughs> sweep. The uh, the categories this year. Well, I mean, they're like at the least they're in the all king. the nominations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Turns out when you turns out when you kill a bunch of characters, <laughs> <laughs> that has an impact on people. What do yeah. you know? It's not Return of the King, Eric. It's Return of the Queen, and the Queen is Claudia Gray. <laughs> oh, True. love that. Um, and in honor of that, I'm gonna I'm gonna screw up our our, our order one more time here, and then Wes can do another category because I feel like I can keep bugging Wes here. Um, Charles, you got to do this next one. It's only fitting. Best Easter egg. Would that yes, be sir. the category you're referring to? Yes. So best Easter egg. Um, you know, these are a lot of fun. I, this is one of my favorite things while reading Star Wars books is just finding all these little things. And I love when people bring these up to us too, you know, cause we don't catch them all, but a lot of these were a ton of fun this year, really some deep cuts. And I'm excited about a lot of these. So number one, mm -hmm. Mace Windu's Dantooine battle being mentioned in Mike Chen's brotherhood. And that of mm -hmm. course is uh, in reference to something that happened in the Gendy series mm -hmm. uh, when, with respect to his Dantooine battle. So some Love for Gendy Tartakovsky's micro series there. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip the order to go to the next one. Well, no, I'm not because Wes is being so helpful. Why would I do that to him? I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> the next nomination is Hot Chocolate being pulled into canon in Shadow of the Sith. Uh, and of course, this was nice because Hot Chocolate was in Legends first. It was in, I, I believe, uh, Timothy Zahn. <laughs> What the hell is For our that audio was? listeners, if you don't watch the YouTube show, I highly recommend just what Wes is doing right now. It's, yes. it's pretty <laughs> tremendous. Uh, so Random here's just the things. generic picture of hot chocolate with a Stormtrooper marshmallow. Um, <laughs> not necessarily the cup of hot chocolate referenced in Shadow of the Sith, but perhaps... <laughs> And it, so it was from, it was Timothy Zahn that brought Hot Chocolate into canon yep. for the original mm -hmm. uh, right. Thrawn series and it was, it was brought Empire. back in Shadow yeah. Sith. There you go, Heir to the Empire, thank you. Uh, the next one, Stellan <clears throat> Geos makes a sweet bun with powder and water in the Fallen Star, exactly the same way that Rey does on screen towards the very beginning of The Force Awakens. Uh, the next one, Corey, you liked this one a whole lot in particular. We talked about this for a while in our roundtable. The Errant Venture is mentioned in Shadow of the <laughs> Sith. There's a sweet bun for you. I thought, this was, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought this, I thought that was like, you know, poop as reference to <laughs> Gorn Horn. <laughs> Tis not. Close. Tis not. Close. Second. Not, that not just time. missed the list. Uh, the no, list. but the Errant Venture, the Errant Venture, of course, is a Star Destroyer that Booster Tarek turned into like a roaming casino. I think it was painted uh -huh. bright red as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was yep. referenced. There it is. Look at that thing. That is insane. Dang, that thing's cool. Um, so this was referenced in Shadow of the Sith. It was the first time it was mentioned in canon. And so we actually could see this brought back. And they've done a good job, I think, of <clears throat> picking and choosing what to bring from Legends. And this was a, a very fun pull. So I hope we do see that in the future. Yeah. And then, of course, getting back uh, to some some Gendy Tartakovsky love. Yeah, we man. We have Kiati Mundi's duel with Grievous mentioned in Mike Chen's Brotherhood. <laughs> I think I think they reference a scar maybe that he had or a cut on his face, if I remember correctly. And, of course, that is a duel that is only seen 
in Gendy Tartakovsky's Clone Wars. It's the very same one where Jedi Knight Shaggy, straight out of Scooby Doo, yeah! is killed by General <laughs> yes! Grievous. So wonderful moment there. Grievous is <clears throat> is probably the most terrifying, terrifying and overpowered in that one episode of Gendy's Clone Wars than any other moment that he has in the entire yeah. series. And he don't skip leg day. Look at that boy. My goodness. <laughs> Woo! Neither does. Yeah. Kyari Mooney doesn't skip shoulder day. Good lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jacked. Yeah. A lot of great uh a lot of great Easter eggs. And again, shout out to Charles, of course. You got that category because you're the one who put together all of these uh Easter eggs throughout the year. You're so good at it. Um and a, and a, and a subtle plug to tune in for next week's round table of convergence to see what Charles pulled out of that one. All right, Wes. Uh, I feel like now guys we're in the we're in the big four. The big four categories are always like, you know. Best picture, best director, best actor, best actress. These are these are the end end of the show ones. Um, let's hit the big four. Ironically, one of the big four is a new category for us this year. We realized we hadn't <laughs> had, but absolutely belongs up there. Uh, Wes, hit us with the first one, man. All righty. So the big four begins with writer of the year. So writer of the year, we start with one and only Claudia Gray. Um, might make a sweep uh, with uh, the fallen star. I'm not going to say, but Could Claudia be. Gray. Awesome. Um, next is Charles Soule, who we mentioned with the social butterfly. Mm-hmm. And next is also prior winner of social butterfly, Daniel Jose Older. Yes, what a sir. headshot. What a headshot. Yeah. <laughs> it's so uh, lovely. Another nominee for, um, I think it's social butterfly. Is Mike Chin? Yeah. Yeah. Got Mike Chin on here. They write well and they're personable. That's right. <laughs> and then last but definitely not least, Justina Ireland mm -hmm. at the at the number five work. spot. And yeah. Wonderful, wonderful writers. Um I mean it's really hard to choose, to be honest with you. They all are expanding mm -hmm. the Star Wars universe for everybody to 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 enjoy. Um, whether it be audiobook version or writing. Uh just pa paper novels. <laughs> you, well, yeah. I call them. Pa paper you, books. You, people reading paper novels. <laughs> <Book learning. laughs> yeah, I I really enjoy all these writers. And, and a lot of them did also dabble between books and comics, which is so fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why we, you know, we really wanted to make sure that Writer of the Year doesn't cup us both. Because writers are working in all mediums. Star Wars is happening in all mediums. Um, Claudia Gray does have a comic that will eventually come out. I think it's been delayed more than anything I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, <laughs> but really, really happy for, the, for this pairing this year. Um, Corey, give us our, our new category uh, this year that is also one of our big four for folks that are no less crucial in how we view the Star Wars universe. Uh, yes. The, the next category, which is a, like we said, a new category, we actually decided right after the teens last year that we wanted to add this one. Yeah. Um, which is because we messed up essentially. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, we did is, uh, the next category is artist of the year. And this is going to comic artists, especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, th those folks are just as crucial to the process as, as the authors are. So, you know, it's really cool to, to kind of get the opportunity to, um, you know, bring this in, but Eric, I'm actually going to let you take this category because you know a lot of these folks. I read these comics. I <laughs> yeah, That's and you, all read good, the, man. you read the comics, so absolutely. All right, our first one is a uh, higher public favorite, Ario Anandito, who's also been uh, was interviewed way back when on the Cosmic Force in the Atini YouTube channel. We then have Harvey Tolaba, who was at the Higher Public Adventures. We have Phil Noto, who is drawn for. A number of variant covers, especially, but also in a lot of like the young adult or junior reader books, as it were. We have Steve Cummings, who's done a number of amazing variant covers here. And finally, Paolo Vianelli, who does the Bounty Hunters comic, um, Valence Nation, um, hashtag on Twitter. And a lot of folks have really been loving that book. That book has done a huge 180, I find, that folks are really loving it. But all five of these folks drawing amazing stuff for Star Wars, amazing characters all around. Um, you know what? Just to link it with that, here you go. In that case, uh, Corey, I'm going to give you this next one then, <laughs> if you like, <laughs> or not. Uh, We're going to say we have two categories left, folks. And I think we should we should decide who wants to do what here. 
Just the yeah, big ones. I mean, we can we can, let's go through the last categories here for sure. Um, you know, the last ones uh, are, of course, the comic of the year and the book of the year. I think we had comic of the year last year, if I remember correctly. I do believe mm-hmm. so. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, no, we did because the higher public won, which is why it is not nominated this year. Mm. Yes, um, this is the final yes. two. Yes, we did. Um, and uh, for these, we have we have five different books here. Uh, first one is this is comic of the year. Trail of Shadows by Daniel Jose Older and David Walk are. Uh, this was uh, fantastic, actually. Trail of Shadows. Yes, this was. These were very very good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, they're amazing. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of really good comics this year. I forgot that some of these were even this year. Um, we had the the new Darth Vader comic by Greg Pak and Raphael Lenko. Yenko. Oh, sorry, it's an I. I messed up. Oh, Raphael okay, okay. Yenko. Yep. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's on um, me. Next, we have Doctor Afra by Alyssa Wong and Minkyu Jung. I think. Yep. Maybe. Nailed and it. Eye of the Storm by Charles Soule and Guillermo uh, Sana. And mm-hmm. then last is the High Republic Adventures by Daniel Jose Older and um, Harvey Tolabao. Tol- Hillbell. The man yes, himself, artist of the year nominee. Look at all these. I love this category, especially because we get mini series, Trail of Shadows, Eye of the Storm. We also get ongoing series, Darth Vader, Dr. Afro, High Republic Adventures. We get young adult stuff. We get mature stuff. We get all of the things in a row. And I think, listen, we love Star Wars books in this show. Obviously, obviously. But I feel like the comics are almost doing like a wider range of topics. You know what I mean? Um, yes, and 2022 really showed that off. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It. It's nice to get. It's nice to get a lot of older, older stuff. What's the right way to put it? To to get comics that highlight, kind of like tried and true characters like Vader and yeah, yeah, I legacy. Guess, stuff. I guess. I guess at this point, like Afra is almost in there now too. It feels like. I mean, she's, she's been, been around, around for, for seven years. Yeah, wow, that right? Just, seven like years. That. It's a long time. Yeah, Afra's well established character. Will not be surprised if she gets brought in as a bigger character at some point, um, to be honest. Um, Absolutely. But, yeah, we got some High Republic in there. We got a lot of really interesting stuff this year for comics, I think. Um, oh, yeah. All right. Final category. Book of the year. Uh, let's see. I want to I I go back before we do this. Last year was Light of the Jedi. Our first ever book of the year. You guys remember what it was? Is it a Thrawn book? It was. Was that like Chaos Rising? It was Charles brings <laughs> all the internet. Was it like Charles gets Chaos the Utini now. That's you, buddy. Oh, that's how it works, yeah. Chaos Rising. Charles, you won that, so you get to announce our Book of the Year nominees. <laughs> that was, is that what we were competing You're, for? It was a surprise. for work. <laughs> I wish I knew that beforehand. All right. Book, <laughs> book of the book year. Book of the year this year. I, I would... Dare say the creme de la creme of the Utini's book of the year. Absolutely. Of course, with all the nominations you've heard already, the first nominee is The Fallen Star by Claudia Gray. I mean, listen, is it fair that it got to stand on the shoulders of two other books too? <laughs> you be the judge. I'm just <laughs> saying it helps. The king. You know what I mean? Like, you be here the we are. Saying it helps. <laughs> uh, but really, Claudia Gray was masterful in this in this book. Absolutely loved it. Nominee number two, Shadow of the Sith by Adam Christopher. Mm. So I I say one of the more unique stories of the year. Mm -hmm. Had some really, really great moments. Some really great Easter eggs in particular. So that's in here as well. Mm -hmm. Nominee number three is Brotherhood by Mike Chen. Of course, of course we're going to nominate this. It's got Obi-Wan in it. it. Because of (laughs) Obi-Wan, right? It's the only reasoning you ever need. Very good ending. Amazing. Very good ending. Actually, yeah. that the quote or one of the quotes there for quote of the year was darn near the last line of the book, if not the last line of the book. It yes, was sir. darn near, Charles. Well, darn I'd, near, wasn't I'd it? say something else, but we're live on YouTube. Gosh, <laughs> darn it. And the next nominee is Path of Deceit by Tessa Gratton and Justina Ireland. We just finished this one, just did a roundtable on this not too long ago. Uh, we we definitely enjoyed this, and of course, a cover of the year nominee as well. Mm-hmm. And lastly, Midnight Horizon by Daniel Jose Older, one of the ones from earlier in the year mm-hmm. as well, along with Fallen Star. Um, another great book. I mean, this the Battle of Corellia in and of oh. itself, I think, was just oh. one of the best moments uh, of the year. So it's a lot man. of great nominees here. Just to run back through them again, because this is the kind of 
one of the biggest honors of the Utinis, if you will, the fallen star, Claudia Gray, Shadow of the Sith, Adam Christopher, Brotherhood, Mike Chen, Path of Deceit, Tessa Gratton and Justina Ireland, and Midnight Horizon by DJ O. Ah, it's good stuff. And also, like, there's all kind of amazing things about Star Wars books as the years go on. I also love that, again, all the data from, from the Utini team put these together. It's not always going to be like this. Uh, only one of the books for Book of the Year is written by a white dude. It was great. But, like, the diversity True. of Star Wars books is so beautiful. There's so many people that have come from so many different backgrounds to write around Star Wars. And they're all really great and awesome. Um, and as we get to the end of our Utini's nominations here, uh, I do want to say, again, plug, utini.com slash 2022 Utini's. That's Y-O-U-T-I-N-E-E-S. Utini's. That's two E's. Go vote. <laughs> nice. True. I'm also saying this so I remember to make the website. Because <laughs> I have not done it yet. <laughs> and it's, but, uh, I've said enough that I'm culpable. Um, fellas, I want to go around and see, if, are there any particular nominations that we want to plug? I mean, hey, it's voting, right? We're going to lobby. Um, did anything this year really <laughs> hit lobby. you uh, that you want to take a couple minutes to, to really help our audience? They're like, hey, maybe this. I, uh, I I will do that, uh, actually. Because I, I would really like to see, um, you know, I think... We're probably, if we count last year, it's probably going to be several years where High Republic works kind of just, you know, sweep the whole stage. You know what I mean? So, it's, like, it's likely. <laughs> it's very likely. I mean, it's just they're all very good. They have a huge impact. The authors are a ton of fun. Like, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, these are hard years to be a, <laughs> to be another creator <laughs> in the space alongside yeah. the High Republic. Right. <laughs> so, I would really like to see, uh, I would like to see some of the non High Republic books do well in these, in the categories. Right. And Brotherhood was point. a fantastic book this yeah, year. Absolutely. Shadow of the Sith was a ton of fun and filled in major gaps from The Rise of Skywalker. Like, you know what a surprise that book was we got to yeah like revisit a film that we haven't really talked yeah. much about in a long time so you know it was uh it was a fun year for the non higher public books as well so just as kind yeah. of a general lobbying you know just think about the the underdog if you will yeah take a second <laughs> think about that guy and yeah. oh on on the heels of that i i have to i have to plug a high republic thing not not there that. you go <laughs> <laughs> Not that I disagree with Corey, that I, I 100% agree. I think there are a lot of really good non High Republic things this year, but quote of the year in Easter egg, I got to give shout outs on because I feel like I spend so much time pouring through some of these books and pulling these things. Uh, the 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 <clears throat> Stellan's quote from the Fallen Star: "This is what hope is." Mm. I would get this tattooed on my body. <laughs> I mean, it's it is yeah that good and it's such the classic it just harkens back to like a new hope even you know in and of itself like to the very beginning it's such an everlasting message i uh, really really love that that quote and then with easter egg man my fingers are crossed for some gendy love to win this series because y'all know how i feel about that tartakovsky series <laughs> yeah you do two count them two <laughs> references in brotherhood yeah, true. two things yeah. that happened in the tartakovsky micro series so Fingers crossed. So piggybacking off the best Easter egg, I am lobbying for Mace Windu's Dantooine battle mentioned in Brotherhood because there's just been nothing but sprinklings of Mace Windu the entire year, and we're going to get it. He's going to rise up from <laughs> the lower it. levels of Coruscant <laughs> where he's been for years. Oh, my God. <laughs> Didn't we say he runs a window shop? It's like yeah. Windows Windows. Yeah, Windows Windows. <laughs> and you know what? They're oh, all reinforced man. windows, too. You can't fly through those. <laughs> Fool me once. <laughs> so look out for Mace Window making his Mace Window. <laughs> I thought that was, a, thought that was intentional. Uh, Mace Window making his resurrection in 2023. You heard it here Solid. first, folks. <laughs> All right. I am going to do a little lobbying myself. Um, in moment of the year, I think there's one that's a clear favorite, the clear 101. They've been lobbying. They've been showing up to all the right parties. They've been shaking the right hands. We all know who they are. It's okay. We understand. I want to lobby a little bit for Yoda's entrance in Midnight Horizon. Yes. So when I think mm. back to this year, there are that is one of the moments where like I remember where I was. 
I was on the second I level of passage. the parking garage at work. I know exactly where I was. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like, because I remember the whole initiative was like, but where's Yoda? But where's Yoda? But where's Yoda? And then what that single, sabbatical? like, literally, what is a sabbatical? Is he writing a book? <laughs> and then literally the dust clears and Yoda shows up. Much love to that. And simultaneously, I also want to double my Midnight Horizon love um, with, with quote of the year. Because, yeah, Charles, honestly, I will be in the shop with you. We'll get a two-for-one deal, get that same quote tattooed on us. Like, that is, it's incredible. Let's be clear. Um, but I love the quote from Midnight Horizon about Lula and Zine. Because the, the quotes about love can often just be so sappy and they can feel inauthentic. And I think this is just a love. This was the moment that really kind of culminated a lot of stuff from High Republic Adventures and really brought them together. And I just like the way DJO wrote it. So uh, think about Midnight Horizon as you all are casting your ballots. But again, those ballots will be open by the end of this week. Um, we'll, of course, we'll tweet it out on all of our social channels at Living Force, um, at Utini, all that good stuff. Um, I'm excited to see what people choose. And, and I think that's really where I am right now in all of these. I don't think there's a single thing in these nominees that does not belong there. And that's not always the case with, with award shows. You know, sometimes you got to fill time. Um, but <clears throat> I was really proud of our team for coming together and putting all these on there. And I'm really excited for to see what you as audience decide are mm -hmm. worthy. And um, as of now, uh, because of holiday planning and things like that, the Utinis will probably be around the first week of January um, for us. So, so just stay tuned. We will keep you abreast and we'll start saying it now. We said it last year. If you're an audio listener, we love you. You are the majority of our fan base and that's great. If there's one show you ever watch on video or live, I highly recommend it's the Utinis because we do try to dress to the nines. We try to put on a show for you. Um, and we really want to celebrate these folks as we go into the new year. So with that, um, thank you all for tuning in to the official 2022 UTD nomination show. That is it. Get your ballots ready and start voting. But that'll do it for this week's episode of The Living Force. We'll see you next week for the Convergence Roundtable. Thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon over at patreon.com slash utini. And a special thank you to Brian Dooley, Patrick Ortiz, Earl Q, Robert Thomas, and Carl Sander on our Jedi High Council, and Elizabeth Cloutier, Ashley Ingalls, and Sally and Chris Eilerson on our Alliance High Command. You can follow us on Twitter at Living Force Pod, at Eric Eilerson, at Corey M. Helton, at C. Henkel, and at Boss West. A special thank you to Matt Davenport, our amazing editor, Ryan, our graphic designer extraordinaire, and Wes, our producer and community manager. Thank you to Corey, Charles, and Wes for potting with me tonight. Thanks to all of you for listening and watching and voting. And as always, may the force be with you.